Welcome to the January 12th, 2022 regular board meeting of the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors. The time is 5 o'clock p.m. Please make sure your microphones are on and remember to talk directly into the microphone. Face coverings will be required for meeting attendees at all times. This requirement is compliance with California Department of Public Health mandate in effect through January 15th, 2022. Your compliance is appreciated. Uh, the roll call, uh, all of us are here and present at this time. Uh, we'll be adjourning to closed session. Before I adjourn to the open session, to the closed session, I will read the closed session items and make an announcement for the record. I would like to announce that for the record that Interim Human Resources Director Andrew, how do I say his last name? Say. Say, thank you. Will replace Human Resources Director Chrissy Kuchwara as negotiator on all closed session items I'm about to read. Conference with labor negotiators, meet with board, uh, appointing negotiators, Fire Chief Dave Williams, Finance Director Steve Hiding, Interim Human Resources Director Andrew Say regarding negotiations between Teamsters Local 1932 non-safety unit employees in the Chino Valley Fire District per government code section 54957.6. In conference with labor negotiators, meet with board appointee, Appointed negotiators, Fire Chief Dave Williams, Finance Director Steve Heidi, Interim Human Resources Director Andrew Say regarding negotiations between the Chino Valley Professional Firefighters Local uh, 3522, the uh, CVPF Safety Unit in the Chino Valley Fire District per Government Code Section 54957.6. Do we have any public comments on closed session items? We have no public comment. Okay, I will now adjourn the open session to closed session. We'll return to the open session at 6 o'clock p.m. Welcome to the January 12th, uh, 2022 regular board meeting of the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors. The time is now 6.01 p.m. We'll now begin the meeting, and I will take a uh, roll. Uh, please note that all board members are in attendance. Uh, face coverings will be required for the meeting attendees at all times. This requirement is in compliance with the California Department of Public Health mandate in effect through January 15th, 2022. We have face masks over there if you need them. Your compliance is appreciated. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have no report out of closed session uh, that we had prior to this meeting. And if you'd please uh, stand and join me in the flag salute and please remain standing for the invocation after that. Please join me in honoring our great nation. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if Chaplain Keith Roby can please uh, join us with the invocation. Please bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, and we especially thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Lord, I pray for your continued protection over our cities. I pray for our first responders, Lord, for your strength, for your safety, and for their health. Lord, for those who are sick, we pray for your healing tonight. For those who are injured, Lord, we pray for your strength. And for those who have lost loved ones, we pray for your comfort. And we ask that you be in our midst tonight, Lord, to help us make decisions that will honor you and those who put their trust in us. We pray for our board of directors, Lord, for wisdom to use the resources that you have provided wisely. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And clerk of the board, do we have any changes to the agenda? Uh, we have one change. Um, staff would like to request to pull an item under presentations, recognition for Captain Brian Turner. We'd like to pull that from the agenda and place it on the February agenda. Okay. Presentations and announcements. Recognition outgoing president, uh, Sarah Ramos Evinger. Will you please come forward? So now it is our time to roast Sarah. Woohoo! <laughs> and talk about uh, the wonderful attributes of her. So, um, I, staff wrote me a fantastic script, and there really doesn't need it. Don't need to really use it. You did a fabulous job. We really all want it. I want to thank you very much for all the great work you've done um, uh, throughout the whole year. It was a challenging year with all the COVID protocols that we've been placed. 
Um, and you know, it's it's a pleasure to serve on the board with you and to be your your uh, vice president of the board at the time. With that, we have this uh, beautiful, not quite be bedazzled, but a crystallized uh, gavel for you. <laughs> Paint that onto your wall of fame. That is beautiful. Beautiful. Fantastic. You're welcome. I don't know. blessings and the wonderful people here who all just embraced me, surrounded me. I had Mike at times when I had to call him um, handling things and um, he came and just picked up right away, no questions, just everyone was there, staff was there, everyone this whole district, the prayers our chaplain team, just everyone was here and just I I, I have, like I can't even express the words, like this fire district is more than a family it's more for people coming into us. It's just a beautiful place to be and beautiful place to work with a bunch of wonderful, amazing people who just love on each other tremendously. And I just am very, very grateful for you guys, very grateful for this district because um, kind of coming, growing up in it and um, learning a lot um, of this. And thank you to all my board members, all the board members. Thank you guys and for your grace, your absolute grace at times when I needed a lot of grace. So um, thank you again, everyone. I appreciate it. And thank you for this beautiful, beautiful, this is just gorgeous, just so, so me. Thank you. <laughs> so beautiful. New employee introduction, auxiliary worker Matthew Gibbon. Please come forward. Come on up. Stand here, stand here with me while I talk about you for a couple minutes, okay? Great. Great. Matthew Gibbon graduated from Western Christian School in Upland and attended uh, Citrus College. He then attended Universal Technical Institute in Rancho Cucamonga and studied automotive technology where he received an associate's degree in occupational studies. Matthew started his work experience as a lifeguard for the Chino Valley YMCA. I used to do that as well. And also worked for uh, Chick-fil-A as a uh, kitchen staff. You stuff look up there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll talk after. His knowledge of automotive technology then allowed him to work at Mercedes Benz of Anaheim Hills as an automotive tech. Matthew joined the Chino Valley Fire District on December 27, 2021, as our new auxiliary worker. In his free time, Matthew enjoys the gym, off roading, watching hockey, and other sporting events, and recreational shooting at the range. He recently started playing golf. Please join me in welcoming Matthew to the Chino Valley Fire District. Uh, next item, retirement recognition, Fire Chief Tim Shackelford. All right, well, as, as many of you are aware, Tim Shackelford is uh, retired from the fire district and unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he has moved, uh, him and Shannon, his wife, has moved out of state. Uh, but we still want to recognize Tim. I'm sure he's going to be watching the video. Uh, so I want, I want him to know how much we appreciate him. So I'm going to read a couple things here. Uh, this evening, we're recognizing retired chief, Fire Chief Tim Shackelford upon his retirement and first 30 years of dedicated service. Unfortunately, Tim was not able to join us this evening, but nevertheless, we want to recognize him for with his distinguished career at the Chino Valley Fire District and his public service to this community. Tim will be retiring out of state with his wife, Shannon, as I said, and their two sons, Riley and Addison, 
and we wish him and his family as much happiness in this next exciting chapter of life. Born in Sierra Madre, Tim grew up in Diamond Bar and graduated from Diamond Bar High School. Tim and his family were longtime residents of Chino and Chino Hills. Tim had an AS degree in fire technology, a BS degree in fire science, and a master's degree in occupational safety and health. Tim is also a graduate of the National Fire Academy Executive Fire Officer Program. That's a two-year program, Jake? Four-year program. It's a four-year program where our chiefs go uh, back to the East Coast to do that. So it's a very uh, long, detailed program. And he's also a certified special district administrator through the California Special Districts Association, which of all things he said was one of the hardest tests he's ever taken in his life. And he was the first fire chief. Tim began his career with the Chino Valley Fire District in 1991. He was hired as a firefighter and quickly promoted to firefighter paramedic, <coughs> the captain, battalion chief, and deputy fire chief. He served both deputy chief of operations and deputy chief of prevention and the fire marshal. He was appointed interim fire chief in 2012, and again in 2014 prior to his appointment as fire chief in 2014. Chief Shackelford made fire district history by being the first chief to be hired at the fire district as a firefighter and promoting all the way up to fire chief. Tim has extensive fire service administrative and governance experience and a wealth of knowledge gained through his career. His specialty assignments prior to promoting to fire chief included explore advisor, EMS coordinator, Sparks of Love Toy Drive coordinator and training and safety administrative battalion chief. In 2007, he was selected as firefighter of the year. He has also served as president of the San Diego County uh, Training Officers Association and was a member of Cal Fire Incident Command Team. His experience and knowledge is invaluable to the fire district. Under Tim's leadership as fire chief, the district district experienced tremendous expansions in the quality of service we proudly serve our community through numerous new programs and high quality training for our personnel. The implementation of our EMS squads and our cardiac care program are but two of the many examples of life-saving service enhancements implemented by the district on Tim's watch. The district has also been actively engaged in important regional and statewide fire service initiatives under uh, with Chief Shackelford at the helm. The district has been honored to have a leader like Tim to take our organization to the next level, and he will be missed. We sincerely thank Tim for his years of dedication and commitment, and wish him the very best in his retirement. Uh, so we have a couple things here. We have a uh, retirement plaque for Tim, and then we also have uh, a 30-year service award that we'll be sending to Tim. Uh, along the way, plus uh, some other electeds have sent in stuff that we'll be sending out to Tim. So I did reach out to Tim, and he asked me to read this statement uh, on his behalf. Um, when I started for the fire district in 1991, I was thrilled beyond belief to finally become a firefighter. My goal was to be the best firefighter that I could, that I could be, so I focus on working hard, continuing my formal education and learning from those around me. That approach prepared me for promotional opportunities and somehow I ended up as fire chief in this incredible organization. I have truly been blessed. Thank you to the residents of the community. It was my honor and privilege to serve you for 30 years. Thank you to all those that mentored, supported, and believed in me. A huge thank you to my family for your love, support, and understanding. I would not have been successful without it. In closing, did I, eat, I ask that each and every member of the fire district continue to serve the community with faithfulness, integrity, respect, and excellence. I wish you all the very best. So we got a quick round of applause so we see it on camera. Sure, I wasn't uh, necessarily planning for this, but uh, Tim, if you're listening, thank you very much for all, all your years of service. It, it You come to these positions and you realize it doesn't happen uh, as an individual. So it happens with a lot of focus on um, mentorship, and you mentioned in the last part of your letter, so family, uh, both uh, here at the fire district, family at home, and uh, folks that you surround yourself with that allow you to have these opportunities. So thank you for being much of that for me, for providing a pathway. Thank you for providing leadership to this organization. And uh, your level of integrity is very much appreciated. So God bless you and uh, uh, Godspeed in your retirement. Thank you.
Congratulations. <laughs> it says to take a five minute break. Do we need to take a five minute break? Um, we don't need to take a break, but we can excuse anybody that would like to, to leave. Okay. Well, okay. I'll tell you what. We're going to take a quick five-minute break. <laughs> We're back. Public hearing. Public hearing. Okay. You want me to read? You got it? <laughs> My glasses are falling out. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Public hearing. Um, purpose is to provide the public with an overview of the fire district's plan to transition from at-large to by division elections and adoption of a boundary map pursuant to California Voting Rights Act and associated statutes and review draft maps with the proposed boundary lines. President Krieger, members of the board, at the regular board meeting held in January of 21, the board of directors adopted a resolution declaring its intent to transition from an at-large to a by division electoral system to comply with the California voting rights. One of the requirements presented to the board was to hold, um, as part of the requirements was to hold two public hearings at which the public could provide input regarding the composition of the divisions and to consider division boundaries uh, before NDC provided or prepared any draft maps um, proposing division boundaries. Those two public hearings, as you know, were held. And now uh, the requirements require two additional public hearings, um, one of them which is tonight. And the purpose um, of that, this public hearing is to review the draft maps. Um, Jeff Simonetti from NDC is a fire district assigned dem demographer and is here again tonight to provide information on the project to the public, review draft maps and receive feedback and review our mapping tool. Um, thank you, Jeff, for um, being with us again. All right. Good evening, uh, President Krieger and Board of Directors. First of all, Happy New Year. And uh, we're looking forward to completing the, the process here. So this evening, we will be talking about <clears throat> specifically doing a review of the draft maps that we've, that we've put together. And we'll be asking for specific feedback on the proposed maps that we've put together. This evening is not a, a, a final determination of what, what the map will be. So we'll be specifically asking again, what are your thoughts on the particular maps? Are there areas that you'd like to change? Are there areas that you'd like to revise? Give us your feedback on that, and then we can take that into the, into the next meeting as well. We'll talk a little bit as well about some of the next steps and hearings and the key deadlines that we have. I know this is a bit of review, for, but we want to make sure that we continue to talk about the, the process and, and why we have to go through the particulars, um, because there are specific laws and, and, and uh, regulations that are associated with the process and why we need to go through the particular sets of hearings and the, the sequence of what we're going to be doing in each one of these hearings. So as Sandra mentioned, we have gone through the two initial pre-draft map hearings. Those were take, took place on November 17th and December 8th. For the next two hearings that will be taking place this evening as well as on February 9th, we are now have the ability to uh, discuss and review the draft maps that we've put together. And we'll also be talking about the election sequence as well. Um, so again, this evening and next meeting is to give us feedback on what the maps are. We'll be looking to finalize uh, what you want to do for the map on February 9th. And then there will be a map adoption hearing on uh, March 9th. This process, again, has to take place no later and be finalized by no later than April 17th. That's the deadline that we have to be able to submit the map on time to uh, the San Bernardino County Registrar of Voters in time for the November uh, of 2022 election. And remember that the, uh, the districts that we put together will be applicable to no the November 22 elections and beyond for this. When we talk about the redistricting rules and goals, there are a couple of key components here that we have to think about and consider, and we'll talk about these, the applicability of this uh, when we go through the draft maps. On the left-hand side, we have our federal laws, and particularly which pertains to the uh, Federal Voting Rights Act. It has two main key components. One is that we have to have substantially equal population, and as you'll see here, um, for all of the maps that, that uh, have been proposed, 
they have to have a population deviation of no greater than 10%. And when we go through the demographic analysis, you'll see that. And what we mean by population deviation is that there can the population from the largest district to the smallest district as a percentage can be no greater than 10%. We can also have no racial gerrymandering associated with that. Some of the other traditional redistricting principles that we look at are communities of interest. So these are socioeconomic and geographic areas that we would like to keep together for the purposes of the district's effective and fair representation. The districts have to be compact, and when we say compact, that means that they um, can, they don't bypass one group of people to get to another group of people. They have to be contiguous and also have to be, uh, have vis visible either natural or man-made boundaries. These are the overall demographic statistics for the, uh, the entire Chino Valley Independent Fire District. So as you'll see here, uh, the current population is, is 170,710 residents. And when we're looking at uh, particular items associated with protected class voting, we look at citizen voting age population, so the, the second uh, set of rows there. When we talk about citizen voting age population, again, that is any citizen within the district that is over 18 years of age. And so what we, when we have the demographic breakdowns associated with this, um, that will be something that, that we'll look at as to are the districts um, in compliance with protected class voting. You can also take a look at this visually here too in terms of where your citizen voting age population. And the important thing to remember here too is that when, when we look at this and how, how we potentially draw the districts, we have to look at where potential citizen voting age population is and particularly with Latino citizen voting age population because we have the ability to draw uh, majority Latino seats with, within the boundaries of the, the fire district. So as you can see here, particularly in Chino, in both the northern parts of Chino as well as parts of areas around the, the preserve and the College Park area of Chino, it has some pretty significant concentrations of Latino citizen voting age population. And again, for the, the purposes of each one of these demographic maps, the purple and bluish colors are lower uh, de percentages demographics, and the orange and reddish colors, or the yellow and reddish colors, are the higher percentages. Here is the Asian American citizen voting age population, uh, and again, we have some concentrations here in the areas of College Park, some areas of the Preserve, um, some areas along the 71 freeway, as well as the northwestern portion of Chino Hills. Another thing that we take a look at too when we talk about potential communities of interest and what parts of the district we want to keep together, we took a look at some of the district boundaries that both the city of Chino Hills and the city of Chino have in place right now. So this is an overview of the, the fire district with the city boundaries for the districts for Chino on the right hand side and the city of Chino Hills on the left hand side in blue. As you'll see here, City of Chino only has four districts because they have four districts and an at-large mayor, whereas uh, the city of Chino Hills has five districts with a rotating mayor. So th that's the, the difference between the, the reason why there's four versus five districts. In addition, uh, as we mentioned the last time, the city of Chino defined particular communities of interest, and it's something that we can consider as we draw our maps here. They defined the preserve, College Park, downtown Chino, agricultural areas in the northern part of the, the city and particularly above uh, State Route 60, as well as uh, Park East in the, in the west, excuse me, Park West in the western part of Chino. So before we get into the draft maps, let's again remind uh, the public about what the remaining upcoming um, discussions are. So we have our third hearing this evening, uh, which will be the opportunity to discuss and revise the draft maps. We'll bring back those revised maps at the February 9th hearing, and at that point we're hoping to, uh, to, to bring a, a finalized map back to that. 
at March 9th will be the final hearing and the board at that point will be able to do, adopt the district map. And again, this has to be completed by no later than April 17th of 2022 to submit that final map to the San Bernardino County Registrar of Voters. So for the remainder of tonight's session, uh, let's, we'll stop here and ask if there are uh, questions regarding the presentation and then we'll transition over to the, uh, the what we are interactive review maps where we can zoom in on the particular maps and uh, again, focus on that and see if there are particular feedback in areas that you'd either, you either like or would like to revise. So I'll stop here and ask if there are any particular questions before we go into the draft maps. Yes. Uh, yeah. Who, who does the county? Now, obviously, you get information from the uh, uh, census, mm -hmm. and then who does the counting for the different areas when you start drawing them out and and whatnot? When 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 you say counting, so we we population. Yes. So. The, we, t we get our data from what's called the California Statewide Database. And basically what it does is it provides us with literally every census block within the state. And then we match that to the census blocks and population data for each one of the census blocks that you have within your district. And then that just gets matched through the software. So that's, that's a, something that's, that's built into the software. Okay, so that's kind of a computer generated thing or something yes, but, along those but, lines. But it but it, it come the data comes from the, the California uh, statewide community database. So is it a deal with the computer program where if you draw a line around a certain area, does it say, Okay, this number of people or the population in that area? Is that yes. the way that works? Yes. Okay, that's that's kinda answers my question. Thank you. No <laughs> excuse me, I, I hate to um, now, if I want to do that, if I want to draw lines and trying to figure out how things go and whatnot, is, is that program available to me? Yes. Okay. Yes, and we have that, that link on the, the website. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Other questions before we get into the draft maps? All right. Seeing none. So click on the link here. And so this will take us to uh, what we call the interactive review maps. So uh, we have, and so um, just so we can follow along in terms of the, the demographic data, everybody has the <coughs> spreadsheets here. Okay, perfect. I just want to ask a quick question, Jeff. Yes. The app is going to show us, I believe we have three here to review. Mm -hmm. All of these three do comply with Uh, that's that, that's a good question. Um, they all are fall within the the population deviation. There's one item on one map that I want to point out that we had a, a had a public submission on that I just just want to point out um, related to protected class voting. Um, but I'll get to that in a moment here. So let's start off with a little bit easier to read over here. Okay, so this is draft map 101. So uh, one of the things that we had gotten some feedback from the board at the last meeting was we want to have as, as much potential representation for um, you know, sort of having two, two Chino Hills districts, having two Chino districts, and then one in the center. There were a couple of considerations as, as we drew these to, to uh, consider. We obviously have an odd number of people on the board, and currently you have three members from the city of Chino Hills and two members from, this, from the city of Chino. So that was one potential consideration as to, to, to how you draw that. The question is, too, again, how do you sort of put that, that middle district? And so we came up with, with a couple of, of different potential options here. So here we have um, two, and this, this map tries to keep as much as possible uh, the, the communities of interest that, that have been identified together. 
So uh, start up here with the, the blue district. This captures you know, the, the downtown Chino areas as well as the, the northern areas of the city. Uh, then we have sort of the, the central areas of Chino split, and then the orange district here again goes across to the, and again, we can zoom in. This is par parts of areas, you know, north of, north of Butterfield Ranch. And then the southwestern portion of Chino Hills connects in um, with the preserve and college park. And then the remaining district is the northwest portion of Chino Hills uh, with the 71 freeway as the dividing line. And as you'll see here, um, we, in terms of District 2 and District 3, um, which are uh, the, this district and this district, we have a uh, major, and actually here I can show you the legend. Let me pull that up. Okay, so districts two and three uh, have, have majority Latino citizen voting age population. Um, and so one of the things that we need to consider since there is the ability to draw two protected voting class, uh, class seats, particularly for Hispanic uh, citizen voting age population, that's something that we need to consider as we draw the maps. So now let's transition to plan 102. Uh, this was an online submission. Um, plan 102 somewhat follows the, 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 the same idea here where you connect the southern areas of Chino together with the southern areas of Chino Hills, so College Park and the Preserve together. There's a central district that runs together um, and captures a, a good chunk of the, the middle of Chino up to essentially the, uh, the downtown. And we've got two Chino districts running into the very northwestern portion of Chino Hills. And then uh, has the, the remaining portion in uh, in Chino Hills. The one thing that I, that I will make mention of map 102 here, if you'll look, and let me, let me show you the district legend. So here, district two, which is the blue district, has a 58.32% citizen voting age population. So has a, has a significant majority in terms of citizen voting age population. District three uh, does not have a majority uh, Latino citizen voting age population. So that is something that if, if this is generally a, a map that, that you like, we would, pr we would have to make some, some changes in the boundaries, particularly between districts two and three, to bring some of that citizen voting age population um, from district two into district three to make sure that we have those two uh, majority protected class voting seats. So that is map 102, and then let's go to map 103. Map 103 here, um, what I tried to do was take the, the idea from map 102 um, and balance that out again so that we get the, the two uh, Latino majority citizen voting age population seats. So what we did was, again, connecting southern Chino Hills up to the Preserve and College Park. Um, but we, the, the Green District, which is District 3, didn't, I, I didn't push that as far into the northwestern portion of Chino Hills so that that captures, again, if you, if you recall back to the slides, the significant concentrations of, of Latino citizen voting age population is in the northern part of Chino, as well as some areas, again, in, in the preserve. But it's this particular area where you have significant concentrations of Latino citizen voting age population. So the, the Green District, which again is District 3 on this map, does not push as far into, Ch into Chino Hills. Um, but again, you have the two citizen, majority citizen voting age population districts for Latinos there. Uh, again, keeps that sort of central district for um, the split between, between Chino and Chino Hills. And then again, the remainder here uh, for 
the northwestern portion of Chino Hills. Keep mentioning two Latino districts. Yes. The majority Latino districts. Mm -hmm. So is that, is that what is mandated by law? So in an instance where, where, where we're going to, to districts, um, it's, it's, again, it's not something that, that, it's not guaranteeing an outcome of, of an election, but in the instance here where we have the ability to draw those two majority Latino seats, it's something that, again, we have to consider uh, the ability to draw that. And why not, why not Asian? We have a large Asian population. In this, in this That's a good question. Um, and the, the reason why is, and again, if you look at um, the, the, the Asian population, with, with the way that, that the, um, the, the districts are, are spread out, there's, there's not an ability to draw a majority Asian population seat together. Um, you know, the, the highest number that we could, could get to um, was approximately 48% in terms of, of your total population. But then again, look, at, look again at your uh, citizen voting age population. It's not, it's not total population, it's citizen voting age population when we have to look at ma majority protected seats. And if you'll look here, um, the highest number that, that we can get to uh, citizen voting age population for Asian Americans is 36.51% in Plan 101. So there's no, there's no way to draw a majority Asian American citizen voting age population seat together. So if it's, if it's not possible, then it's not something that's required. Sure. Yes, and, and absolutely. And if there, please direct me if there are particular areas on a particular map that you'd like me to focus in on, I absolutely can do that. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously, we're all wondering where our houses, our residences line up with all this. That's a, that's a good question. And uh, I can answer that uh, for all three of these maps, uh, there are no paired incumbents within seats. There are no paired incumbents within seats. Everybody has their own has their own district. And so on map two, can we go back to map two? One oh two? Sure. So this is the one that you're worried that doesn't have three. Map one oh two does not have two uh, majority Latino seats. You are correct. Now it, it's it's pretty close. Um, so district and here, let me pull up the legend so you can see which which one I'm re referencing. Okay, so district two is the blue district, so the northeastern Chino, uh, that has 58.32 percent citizen voting age population. So it's it has well more of, than a majority. District three, which is the green seat, currently the way that this is drawn has a 42.9 percent uh, citizen voting age population. So it's, it's not far off. There could be some potentially minor changes to, to if, if this is a concept that, that the board likes, there could be some minor changes between districts two and three to, to move, likely to move those, those two together um, to, to, make a, to make two uh, majority Latino seats. But that's, if that's the direction of the board, that's something I can look into. Bottom sliver of the, I, I whoops. Like to be able to see the, um, this mouse is super sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I want to see the cross streets. Yep. Uh, yeah. the sure. Thank you. That's good. So that is. Uh, the Grand the, Avenue. Yep. The shop. And Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Absolutely, and and this is we we have these maps published, so these are these are completely public to to everyone. And yes, so you can. If I look at this online, I just want to make sure. I'm, I can zoom in and out. I, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I can't manipulate it unless if I duplicate it. So this is. I want to make sure if I click on something by accident. Yes. So, so these ones, yes, absolutely. These are these districts are locked, but yes, you can zoom zoom in and out. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. That's, that's all I was yes. Can you scroll down to the upper right because this is a lower chart? Uh, which which color line, district? The line is between uh, one and five. I'd like to see the line. Between one and five. Sure. Right by where most of us go. Yeah, that area. Man. <laughs> right there. So I, I believe that's uh, Sokol Canyon uh, okay. Parkway there. So pipeline. Yep, and pipeline. This is east-west. Yep. And so the thing, the thing about this area here, particularly the western part of Chino Hills, because a lot of it is uh, undeveloped, there are some very large census blocks over there. Um, if, if you were playing around with the mapping tool, you probably ran into that. So, so some of these, there's, there's not a ton of granular change that you can make in, in this area just as a result of how big those census blocks are. Um, but uh, yes. Can we go back to the first map? Sure. 101. 101. Sure. I'd like to look at each district. Sure. Okay, which, uh, which one would you like to focus like in on to, first? Your choice. I'd like to, I'd like to see each district. Uh, okay. Uh, so why don't, we just, why don't we start from the north and go south? Okay. Uh, so... Okay, so this, uh, yep, so this uh, again captures, um, so what I tried to do here is, uh, again, the, the way that uh, the city of Chino defined their um, uh, downtown in terms of their communities of interest was, it was, it's Monta Vista, Schaefer, uh, Riverside, and then uh, I believe it's Edison on, on the, the southern end there. Chino Sorry, yes, Chino Ave, you're correct. Um, so we tried to preserve as much of the, the downtown together as possible. Then this district again goes to the, to the 71 freeway down to Schaefer Avenue. The purple district, again, tried to keep the, com the communities of interest here together with College Park and all of the preserve. The central district kind of, again, captures everything in between those two areas out to Los Serranos Country Club. And again, um, you know, kind of looking at Sokol Canyon there as the, you know, as the, as the dividing line. And then uh, capturing again the, the northwestern part of of Chino Hills as your, your uh, final district. Yeah, that's. Is there two carbon canyons in here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. So yeah. it's split. Yep. We have it split. Yeah, the, 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 the challenge that. The, no, that's all. Yeah, no, I get it. It just means they get two of us, Sarah. The challenge that, that we have out there, like I mentioned, is just the simple fact of how big the, the census blocks are out there. And and you know you you have you have limited numbers of, of population in that area, yeah. so the census blocks are different, Sarah, on each side of Carbon yes. Canyon. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why yeah. that's why right. it's right. When I've drawn, I've done about three or four of these things playing around, and, and sometimes I just get it that the, all the all of Carbon mm -hmm. Canyon, both sides together, and other times it just doesn't work mm -hmm. out. It's that one. Yeah, because when I see we were able to get it together, is it yeah. together in that? 
Um, the thing is, I don't, I don't believe there's a substantial population out there. So if that's something that um, I can look into, if that's, some, if that's some, the direction of the board, you know, if we want to. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, Volano doesn't necessarily no. right. but you either got go with carbon in there or he's not like the, the big car, Yeah, Kevin can just stay together. I think that, so. That, whether, you know, both sides, I don't think we should split them up. Okay. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Same, same interest. Um, so in one oh yeah. three <coughs> yeah. And inclu including Volano? Well, you have to because that's in your precinct. Okay. Okay. So 103 keeps that together. Let's. issue with the. Can you back up so we see the bigger picture 103 real quick? Yeah. I just wanted to double check. So 102, um, just before we do that, so 102 keeps that together. So the only one that this splits that is. 101. Yeah, 101. Okay. Now I have a question, sir. Yes. Um, now you said each of these maps keeps. There's five board members. There's five five uh, precincts. And the way you've driven uh, drawn this is each map has one of us in each precinct. Is that correct? Yes. So every every map is just one one uh, board member as as it is right now. Yes. Thank you. Okay, what uh, what particular map and area would you like to see? Um, okay. The split between one and five. Between one and five. Okay, so the yeah, so this 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 captures Volano in. So the only the only one that that doesn't uh, have that split is one hundred and one. And then can we go up uh, north? I think I figured out the mouse now. <laughs> All right. So this is 103? This is 103, yes. And this complies currently? Yes. 101 and 103 comply with, with uh, deviation and protected class voting. Yes, uh, so we have the, 
we have the presentation. I have the link on the presentation. Can we put the link up on the website tonight? Sure. Okay. Yeah, they'll, we'll put the link up on the website tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Okay, so it'll be on the district site? Yes. And then we can zoom in and mm -hmm. look at it? Absolutely. We can duplicate it over? And... Yep. Okay. So the, the, the interesting thing here is the orange area and the blue area have equal population. Oh, I see it. <laughs> Just geographically, it looks yep. so different, but it's... So much of that orange area is empty land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, there, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, well, I mean, you're, you're, you have foothills here, but, you know, when you look up at the mountains, for example, you know, we're working on Claremont Unified School District right now, and I think it's like two-thirds of the actual school district is up physically in the mountains. So, I mean, and there's nobody living up there, right? It goes all the way almost up to Valdi Village. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, areas here, too, where it's, you know, either uninhabited or very small percentage of population. So I have, I have the direction on one, 101. Um, Carbon Canyon, we'll, we'll keep that together and maybe redraw that. So it, it, that, I guess, two questions. Number one, is that, that direction on what we want to do to revise 101? And then... Okay. So with that, we will uh, open the public hearing. Uh, and is there anybody who would like to speak on this? Mm -hmm. Mr. Charlie Blank. Um, yes, Mr. Blank, can you please come yeah, forward? Please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got my KN95. I'm yeah, kidding. that's right. <laughs> All right, number one, uh, you were asked, or when asked, or Mr. Williams, I should say, I should be more formal, he asked if each board member's seat is there, right? Now, when you made this, was that a mandate, or did it just happen to fall that way? It's, it's not a mandate, no. Right, because if it was a mandate, you'd, it'd be illegal. Well, it, actually, voter choice can be considered. Voter choice being the people that were voted in by the people is is one of the factors that can be can, considered. It can be a factor. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, you know. Did I say that correctly, guys? Okay. What are the protected classes? I mean, obviously, Hispanic and Asian, but what about blacks? Yes. So are they taken care of in 101 and 103? Um, so it's, again, it's the same thing with uh, Asian American and African American citizen voting age population. Right. With the, with the percentages there, there's no way to get to a either majority African American or majority Asian American. Yeah, I mean, in other words, majority meaning 50%, right? Correct. Yeah, I mean... I was when I was first listening to you. I said, "How are you ever going to get twenty percent in every every class in every district? That's impossible." Right. Yeah. It's only majority. So one oh, I agree with with what Sarah said. It appears one oh three does have Carbon Canyon by uh, in total, correct? Yes. According to this, you have two majority Hispanics districts in one oh three, correct? Yes. And you also have as high an Asian percentage as you're going to have in any of the others, correct? Other than the first one, which is 36 percent, correct? Or I guess uh, 101 is 48 percent. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's 36 percent. Yes. Okay. So 36 versus 32. Um, why would you, I mean, you'd have to adjust number five if you were going to keep Carbon Canyon together, wouldn't you not? Um, five and five and I mean one and four would have to be adjusted, but you'd have to adjust part of five too, wouldn't you? For what? For what map? For number one, I'm looking at. Oh, on number one. Yeah. Yes, five would have to be adjusted down. Or or, or part of uh, three drawn into four. I guess something's going to have to get added into District I mean, Four. It, it, 
understand. Yes. If, if the only thing that people are concerned about, I mean, Sarah, and I agree with Sarah. I mean, you know, I live on one side of Carbon Canyon, and, well, where I live, the cows live on the other side, but <laughs> I don't know if they vote or not. I'm not sure they vote. <laughs> they vote in a dairy block, but anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, three, you know, my, I don't want to say it's my opinion, but three, you don't have to do anything with. Mm -hmm. Correct? Based on the percentages and stuff? Based on the percentages, yes. It's, it's... So you wouldn't have to do anything with three? Correct. You could monkey around with one to try to get it right, or you could just go with three, 103. Simple. That's all I got. Thank you very much, folks. Good input, Charlie. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak on this? With that, I'll close the public hearing, and now the board can deliberate on this as well. So uh, let's go down the line. Ms. Williams, do you have anything uh, you'd like to throw in, throw in here? Uh, actually, I, I don't think I do at this time. Uh, the gentleman asked, answered my question, and... Uh, Oh, I do have one question, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, there was some stuff in the news about one person. It wasn't involving us or anything. It was at a, another place where he had not moved into his district in time. And I think they were going to replace him. He would got voted in and everything, and uh, he didn't get moved into where he was supposed to be living. And so... Um, what are the requirements in regards to that? Uh, do you know? Are, are, are you able to answer that as far as uh, requirements of residency? Um, I, I'll kick some of that over to Jeff, but there, there is a requirement of residency within the district. When, when the timing is on that, that's something I'd have to look into as, okay. to, as to when that, that would have to take place. It's not, he's not an election lawyer. He's, he's a... The yeah. guy that takes numbers and plugs well, it in the maths. Yeah, because I was a subject of some controversy uh, because my house right now is not where I'm living, and I know that the uh, federal government people have voted that a person can have two residences. And so I wonder, uh, under those circumstances, how that affects these different districts and so on in regards to something like that? Uh, it, it wouldn't affect the, the makeup of the district, and, and it, that would be something that I would check with the Registrar of Voters in terms of what the, you know, the, the, the timing is in terms of when you, you or anyone would need to have, meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, 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 and I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to say my understanding was you could have as many residents as you need, but you need to reside in the residence that you're elected in at minimum. I think it was like 50% or like more than 50% of the time. I don't know percentage, but I think that was my understanding of the, of the law, a certain amount. So Jeff is going to correct me on that. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a fair... That's a fair uh, fair summary. The legal test is really your, where you intend to remain. In other words, if you go somewhere for a temporary time period because your house is being worked on or something, that's not that that second place is not going to be considered your domicile or your residence. The original the original home would be, um, but there are a whole bunch of factors that can go into you know where where you're going to be, and certainly the amount of time that you spend is one um, significant factor. Um, and you would need to be uh, living in your domicile at the time that uh, you're serving. Um, some would argue because you fill in your in your election papers, you fill out and you state that you would be qualified uh, to be elected and to serve. Um, some would argue that you have to be living in that particular district at the time you turn in your nomination papers. But that's um, l that's less clear than than the time period that you're actually serving once you've been elected. Correct. All right, uh, Harvey. Any anything? Yeah, I, like I mentioned, I've been in there. It's it's an interesting tool. Once you 
go in there a little bit and start playing around with it, you, you get the hang of it. At first, it's a little daunting. Yeah, it's a little daunting, a little wonky. But once you play around with it and don't mistakenly click somewhere you should <laughs> click and whatnot, it. Yep. It, it, I I get it. Uh, I like the little landmark thing. You can so you can set things in there, and and a lot of the maps you're showing us. I've I've come up with. Something close in some cases, a little different here and there. Um, so I'm looking forward. Really, I, I really want to spend some more time looking at these in more detail. On screen, blow them up, kind of see what how that looks. Um, one of the things, yeah, we had mentioned is we really, I think collectively would like to have two and two and one that overlaps, but it it's, it doesn't work. There's not enough population yep. balance between the two cities to make it work. So we're going to have this where we can have one or two predominantly in each city, but we're going to have some, some mm -hmm. multiple overlay. Um, and if we're going to be a little light in a district on, on the count, we probably want that to be in the whatever district has the preserve, because that's where we're probably going to see the most growth coming um, yes. as we move forward. So that's one of the considerations. I, I agree with everything on, on Carbon Canyon. We need to keep that into one district. See where are my other notes or anything else? I think I think that would be my note. I, I appreciate you being here. It helps me understand more of the, the demographic stuff. I'm just kind of laying things out, and I wasn't paying enough attention to that, so I need to. Yeah, I didn't even look at demographics. I was just trying to get the population. <laughs> right. to, well, and to, and, to and, match. and I I appreciate you guys taking a shot at uh, the the mapping tool because there certainly is a learning curve, and I. I, I can say that that I, I had some some learning curve when I started at NDC too. Um, so, give you a quick bit of background. The, Doug Johnson, our our president, and I both went to Claremont McKenna College, and that's where I met and started working with Doug when I was a student there at the Rose Institute. And uh, back in the early 2000s, when I was there, uh, we had done some mapping, and I'd done some GIS work, but. Obviously, in between now and a couple of years ago when I started working with NDC, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> I told Doug, I said, in the next life, make sure when I'm a student and you work at the Rose Institute, you remind me to pay more attention on how to do these That's mapping right. tools. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, there's a learning curve for everybody. So. Yeah, no, it is. But, but if you take the time and go in there and try, it, 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 you start getting the hang of it. Yes. Yeah, and, it, know, it, it, it definitely takes a while. Sarah, any input? So 102 is going to be a little too difficult yep. um, to mess around with. So maybe just you know, leave that one. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> oh, was that? Okay. oh no, I just it was cool. just me playing around that. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, I I, I kind of like how it was done. But yeah. Okay. John. So, yeah, I, I like 101 and 103 with the exception of the Carbon Canyon. And yeah. Possibly some combination between the two might might work. Okay. Uh, especially with what, uh, 103, I like the or 102. 101, I like the districts, what is that, yeah. two and three at the top, the way they're divided. But yeah. To pull in Carbon Canyon in 101. Although, Char is Charlie, you can have two representatives if we leave it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you have a hard enough time with me. Oh, mm -hmm. the one on each side of the road. You have a hard enough time doing it with me. <laughs> no, I would like to see Carbon Canyon incorporated as, as one community. Okay. And so yeah. It's community for us and, yeah. and very important and and that's 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 great feedback and you know it, it it's it's a pertinent discussion you know i mean there's lots of lots of cities that, that we talk with when we say communities of interest it, it make the exact discussions you're talking about would it make sense to have that in in as one representative or like you mentioned would it alternatively make more sense to have two people or multiple people representing that area it's right. again a policy choice that you guys need to deliberate through. I think if, if we truly look at communities of interest, that is one community of interest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, I agree, manipulate 101, mm -hmm. see if we can do something with it to make it look mm -hmm. a little bit better. And then I, what I'd like to see us come back with is 101 and 103. 103 could probably just stay as is, mm -hmm. but manipulate 101 and give us a couple, you know, g give us a choice with that one as well. So a couple choices. 101.5 and 103, essentially. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Are we in consensus on that? I don't think we vote on this. We just give staff so, direction. So just a quick, so if, if other maps get do get submitted, would they would we be looking at them collectively or how? Yes. Okay. Yes, and so if there if there are further maps that come in, um, again, as long as they're population balanced and and kind of follow those those same guidelines, then yes, we'll and we'll we'll put those in. And the, again, though, since we're in the districting process. They have to come in prior to, we have to post those seven days prior to the next hearing. So as long yeah. as they meet that deadline, then yes. Yep. We'll include yep. them. No, totally get it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, Thank you. Oh, questions. John, oh. go ahead. No, just to, uh, with what you just said, they have to be in seven days before our next meeting. Right. But we don't adopt it until March. There for there still be revisions after the next meeting? For considerations and, and discussion. Uh, for them to be able to be discussed at the meeting, they have to be posted seven days prior. Okay, so what happens if stuff is submitted after our next meeting? Uh, so we'll, there is, we need to have a deadline prior to that. Okay, so and then, and then it would have to be in seven days before the March meeting for us to even consider it in March. Yes. Okay, that clarified. Okay. Uh, excellent. I think that's it. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you next month. Sounds good. Okay, public communications. This is a time and place for the general public to address the board of directors about subjects that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. The public may address items on the agenda at the time addressed by the board. Due to board policy and Brown Act requirements, action may not be taken on an issue not on the agenda. When you address the board, please state your name and address prior to making your remarks. Please limit your comments to five minutes. And do we have any requests to speak? Okay. Um, seeing none, lays on reports. And Mr. Um, Charlie Blank, Far Safe Council. <laughs> Thank you. Next item, consent calendar. All right. We have the consent calendar items one through seven. Does anybody want to pull anything? I believe that Sarah wanted to, to pull one. No, no. No, I cannot. I cannot. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Yeah, just on, on number one. Yeah, just the number one. Yeah, thank so you. So Sarah's pulling number one, and I just have a quick comment on number seven. So uh, if we could move to get a motion to pass number two through uh, six. Motion to approve two through six. Second. So a uh, motion by... Uh, uh, Sarah. Sarah and second by John. I was trying to come up with, you know, the, the board member part. I couldn't get that out of my mouth. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The past 5-0. Uh, number one, Sarah? I was not at the meeting, so I cannot vote on this, so I have to recuse myself. Okay. So I move to approve uh, item number one. Two, second. Harvey second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four, zero, one. I abstain, yeah. And then number seven, I just had a quick question about uh, COVID protocols with this, and this goes to you, Jeff. Um, so if one of us has an exposure and we can't make the meeting, within how many days can we set it up virtually? 48. Chino Hills last night had that situation, and as long as... Uh, the, the mayor couldn't make the meeting. He had an exposure, so uh, they allowed him to call in, but they had 72 hours notice that they were able to post it. Is 72 hours the magical rule? Certainly, if we receive word uh, 72 hours before the meeting, then we can amend the agenda to provide that it's going to be teleconference. Okay. Um, that would be the safest way. The other option would be to keep language on, the, on every agenda that provides for teleconferencing that way, if at any time, even two hours before the meeting. Well, isn't that what this is or not? Or we voted not to do that? This makes the findings. This I does not contain that. the language in terms of setting up the teleconference and allowing the public to call in and whatnot. That would require additional language on the agenda, and it would have to, it would mean the staff would have to have that technology set up and prepared to set up, even if nobody calls in. Got it. Um, That's right. So That's what we discussed. So, so I guess my question is, for example, if I, uh, I'll use myself as an example, if I have an exposure or get COVID before the next meeting, five days before, and I'm able to tell you guys, hey, 72 hours, the board doesn't need to vote on that, right? This allows us to set that up remotely. We would be able to, we 
you be able to amend the agenda, teleconference, post at your location, and... Um, and invite the public over to my COVID-riddled house. Just Excellent. Like, just like it was before. <laughs> well, pre pre pretty much. Uh, all right. With that, I move to approve number seven. Second. John seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Old business, none. New business, item number eight. Board of Directors Annual Individual Membership Review. The purpose is for the Board of Directors to review and approve individual annual memberships for board members in compliance with policy number 1090. President uh, Krieger, members of the board, board policy 1090 encourages participation in associations, service clubs, and fraternal organizations for board members in good standing and provides for reimbursement of the direct and reasonable cost of said memberships upon annual board of directors review and approval. Listed on the staff report are the submittals for board member individual memberships for approval consideration. And those are uh, President Mike Krieger, Rancho Del Chino Rotary, Vice President John DeMonico, Chino Rotary, and American Legion. Board members are limited to reimbursement for two such mem memberships. It's uh, recommended that the board of directors review and approve annual memberships for board members per policy 1090. Okay, can we add something onto this? You certainly can. I'd like to add Director Luth for Kiwanis Club. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that, but at this point, um, my work is covering that, so okay. I, I, I appreciate that. But I, so no need. I, no need. So. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure you're taking care of Thank you. Yeah. Comments? Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry. What are we doing here? <laughs> does anybody, uh, does anybody from the public have anything to say on this at this time? See none. Hearing none. Board member comments. Anybody have any comments on this? I do. John. I do. I go ahead. You go. No, nope, you go first. I think service clubs are mm -hmm. very valuable to the community, and our participation with the service clubs. I think are, are very important to the service clubs as well as well as the fire district. And I encourage all of our board members to consider joining the service club as well as our employees. It's uh, a lot of things happen with the service clubs. Uh, there's a lot of fundraising that goes on. A lot of that money comes back into the community. Mm -hmm. uh, our Make a Child Smile program benefits from that as well, as well as some other things. So I would just highly encourage our board to uh, select a service club and, 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 and be part of the, the community with the service club. So I think I've said enough. Excellent. Sir. Okay. So um, what if we decide mid-year that we want to join a service club? Can we just join it on our own? And then or does it have to come back for approval? I'm just wondering because we're past. I know that we had requested okay. membership. Can I make a comment on that? Yes. Can we leave this open that if the board member wants to join a service club, that they can join a service club uh, through the next year without having it listed tonight? Is that possible? That would be a legal question. If you do that, you might want to have them do so kind of at their own risk that they would have to come back to the board at some point, perhaps next year, and ask for reimbursement um, just so that the board has some control over mm -hmm. I, I believe sure. this, I believe this is also covered in our board policies. Right. So and I, th I thought our board policies allowed that. Oh, yes, yes, so, um, and that's the purpose of the this agenda item. It requires that we bring this item Once annually for okay. approval for um, reimbursement. So, Sarah, um, I'm not sure if I'm doing this yet, so I went ahead and submitted oh, okay. for it, even though I'm not sure if I'm doing it. Okay. So, if is there a specific service organization like Sir Optimus or something else that you were interested in doing? Yeah. That, that we could just go ahead and adopt yeah. and put your name into it now? I don't want to do that right now because I want to do some research. So okay. I'll bring it up later. But, yeah, there but, are. But there's nothing to stop us mid-year no. of her requesting it to be put on the agenda, no. correct? correct? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. And just, and just one more point. There's a number of service clubs. Is we, have, cheap. we have two Kiwanis. Right. We have three Rotaries. We have Alliance Club. Mm -hmm. We've got the American, American Legion. Legion, VFW. So there's, there's some, quite Sir a few Optimist. out there. Uh, I, I thought I said Sir Optimist. I missed yeah. that. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and, and probably even more than that, I don't know if we, we don't have an Eagles or an Elks local that I'm aware of, but, uh, but we've got a number of service clubs in the Chino Valley. Yeah. yeah. All right. 
I would concur with everything that's been said, I, and, and along with staff, command staff in particular, I, I, absolutely. Being involved in the community, it helps make a community what it is. Mm -hmm. and I totally support this, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very appreciative that we have staff members that take part yeah. in, in these uh, local service groups as well. Uh, okay, with that, uh, can we have a motion? I move to approve. I'll second it. Okay, uh, Harvey moves, John seconds. Uh, uh, all approved? Aye. 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 Five zero, thank you. Item number nine, Fire District Board Member Compensation. Purpose is for the board directors to review and discuss board member compensation. President Krieger, members of the board, the fire district policy and procedures for board of directors calls for review and consideration of board member compensation at the regular board meeting in January of every even year or as soon thereafter as practical to review and consider board compensation to determine if any adjustments are appropriate. Health and Safety Code Section 13857, as part of the Fire Protection District Law of 1987, sets forth, forth the provisions controlling compensation for members of the district's board of directors pursuant to, sap, pursuant to Chapter 2 of Division 10 of the California Water Code, Section 2200, or its successor uh, statutes. State law provides for increases in compensation by ordinance up to 5% for each calendar year following the effective date of the last adjustment, and it has been two calendar years since the last board approved compensation increase. The maximum number of compensable meetings or other days of service rendered as a member of the board in line with board policies remains at 10 per month. Board member compensation is currently set at 165 per meeting as adopted by ordinance number 202001. As currently permitted by state law and the board policies, the maximum allowable current, current increase per meeting could be 1650. And that's based on the 5% statutory limit on increases per year. And that's multiplied um, by two. Um, so a comp compound is not uh, uh, allowable. So we take the 5%, which is 8.25 8 times two for a total of 1650. So the total amount that um, we would be able to increase the 165 would be uh, to um, adding the 1650 for a total of 181.50 per meeting. If the board of directors would like to consider adopting an ordinance to provide for an increase in board member compensation, the propo proposed schedule for adopting an ordinance would be as follows. The first reading of the ordinance would be held at the February regular board meeting. Second reading and adoption would be held at the March regular board meeting, and the ordinance uh, would be effective July 1st of uh, 2022. Any ordinance to increase board member compensation requires a public hearing held at a regularly, regularly scheduled board meeting and notice of um, hearing published in newspaper of general circulation uh, within the district once a week for two cons consecutive weeks prior to the public hearing. It is recommended that the board directors review and discuss the information provided pertaining to board member compensation and provide direction to staff. All right. Uh, with this, do we have any uh, requests to speak? We have no request to speak. All right. With this, we will um, have board comment. Uh, and I'm going to start off because uh, I want to get my piece before Director DeMonico uh, cuts me off. <laughs> So uh, this is uh, something that comes up every two years. Uh, we adopted it into, um, into our bylaws that we would do this every two years instead of every year uh, to increase this. Uh, the reason why we do this every two years is because when we've delayed this time and time and time again, as we've done in the past, uh, this 5% compounds every year, and all of a sudden it looks like to the general public that we're taking a 25 or 30 percent pay raise, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. There is a cost associated with us being board members and uh, the time that we spend doing this. It's uh, an uncomfortable thing. Uh, we do this out of the love for it, whether we're paid or not. Uh, however, there is a cost to that. Uh, and with that, I would recommend that we uh, not do the full 1650, but increase it uh, $8.25. That's my recommendation and my motion. 
And when? Any Should comment you, on this? I'm sorry, how much to increase by? $8.25. Okay, That's so half of eight, what is, so half of what's case. recommended. Okay, saying. my my comment is this. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because uh, 15 minutes before I left to come to the meeting, I was watching the news. And we've got, uh, they were talking 7% increase. It's a 40-year high for uh, cost of living increase. And um, my recommendation is we're at 165, take it to 175, and pretty much that's all I have to say. Okay. I like even numbers. <laughs> Mr. Luth. Uh, yeah, I, I struggle with this every year. I, no, I don't think anybody's up here necessarily for, for this, uh, the stipends that, that we get. Uh, but I do agree, I think it's important that we're compensated for the time, the effort, the expenses that we do incur. Uh, I think uh, cost of living is obviously going up. And um, in the past, I have, have supported these, these types of bumps where we, but we, at least in the time I've been up here, we have never taken the, the full 5%, I don't think, at least not that I recall. It seems like we have generally gone up around two, two and a half percent a year. Um, so I, I, I need to hear some more arguments because I, I can be swayed either way very easily at this point. And so I'd, I'd like to hear a few more comments. Director Evinger. Well, I'm doing some math right now. So if we do it at 825 times 10 meetings, okay. Um, so that's $825 a year. No. Oh, yeah, and oh, now per board member, per board member. If we and then, if we all maxed out. Yes, if we all maxed out, so it'd be forty one four thousand one hundred twenty five dollars more right. additional on the district. That'd be the absolute maximum. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Um, if we did it at, I think I did the math wrong. Let me do that again. Hold on. Eight twenty five. I just like to spend. I don't always calculate, but. 825 if we do the max 10. Okay, so yeah, so 8250 times um, our five board members, right? Five times 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you want to do the math? Make sure I'm right. I, I believe you. Someone else has to check me. It's it's right around there, yeah. but it's, so it's... That's what I'm saying, like, um, and I can, I can go either way as well. Um, I, I work. I take a, a, I take a lot of my own time off. I, um, I even at times have to, and it's my choice of being up here. You know, I understand that. But I even um, take time off without pay to um, attend things at times. And I don't think any of us are, um, are, you know, abusing the system or that we're getting rich off of, you know, this. We choose to serve, um, but. It does come. It does come with some, you know, at times some liabilities on our own. So, yeah, I, I'm. I could go either way. The eight twenty-five or the ten that's proposed. Okay. And I could also, if we decide not to, but if we decide not to, we'll be in the same shoes that we were again, right. where we had to take this increase. You know, if we increase. if we wait, it's going to look like a twenty percent increase yeah. next time with our discussion, yeah. which. You know, once again, this is what we try to avoid. As as Wynn pointed out, cost of living is dramatically up. Inflation is skyrocketed. Unemployment is very, very low now. So we, you know, there's jobs that are available. Um, yeah. Some of the arguments we've had in the past don't exist today. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, uh, Director DeMonica. I uh, agree with Mr. Williams with round numbers. I, I like the round numbers. Because they're like I say, the round numbers, uh, preferably the 165. So. All right. Uh, so uh, I had a motion at 825. Uh, would anybody like to second that motion? Mm. See none, hearing none. Mr. Williams, did you want to float a motion out? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that... Uh, we increase it by ten dollars, bring it uh, to one seventy-five per, per meeting. 
Okay, I'll second that motion. We'll take a uh, roll call vote on that. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Luth? No. Ms. Sevinger? They want to take public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I did already. Did he? Uh, I apologize. Not, yeah. But not, not after the proposed amount. Oh, was. do I have to do this no. afterwards? No, you don't. I apologize. Can I, can I do it afterwards? Certainly can if you'd like, but you're not required. Mr. Blank? To. I'd like to. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, because that's where the microphone is. You you don't, but you know. You know, you guys, no matter what you do, people are going to give you hell. All right? So if you're going to get hell for this, you ought to do it at 175. And I mean, I, I could be a, you know, a, a I guess a grouch and say, well, that's too much money and everything else. But you know what? Every place I go in this city, if I go someplace at some event, one of you or all of you are there. And it's your f time. And, you know, I know people say, well, you know, they asked for it, you know, blah, 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 blah. You might have asked for it, but you should be compensated for your time. And I mean, I, I understand what Sarah's saying. And I'm sure all of you guys do the same thing. I mean, there are other things you could be doing, number one. Number two, a lot of times you're taking off work, off from work, or, you know, for those guys who are retired, somebody in your house might be saying, you're going out again? You know? So, I, I mean, I, as a public person who's in the public, I say go for the whole enchilada, because otherwise, the next time around, you're going to face the same thing. You know, nobody's going to be happy with it. But, you know, public servants deserve to get compensation, because... Uh, we need people to do it, and you shouldn't do it for free. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Well, so, uh, so with that, we're going to redo the motion. Uh, Win said ten dollars an hour. Is that correct, Win? Ten dollars per meeting. Per right. meeting, I second that. Uh, so we'll do the voice vote again, Win. So. Just to, com sorry. Just, to, just to confirm, yes. just so everyone knows, then that would be 175 It would per... increase at $10 to $175, and that won't begin until? July 1st. July. July 1st. Okay. And I would like to make a motion that we increase it by $10 per meeting. And I'll second that. Okay. So, voice vote, win. I vote yes. Director Luth. I appreciate your comments, Charlie. I still vote no. Thank you. Director Evinger. Yes. Director DeMonico. I appreciate your comments, Charlie, but I also vote no. Mm -hmm. And I vote yes, and that will be a three approval, two, uh, two no's. So that will move forward. Thank you, everybody. I knew that John and I would battle on that one a little bit, <laughs> as we do every time. <laughs> and, John's right, and John writes the checks One of these days I'm going to win. <laughs> you win. You win often. You win often. Come on. Item number ten, resolution number twenty twenty two zero one, adopting revised fire district policy and procedures for board of vote, uh, excuse me for board of directors. President uh, Krieger, members of the board, our purpose is for the board of directors to review proposed changes to the fire district policy and procedures for Board of Directors as presented and review, approve, and adopt resolution number 2022-01, rescinding resolution 2021-13, and adopting the proposed policy and procedures for Board of Directors as reviewed with modifications. At the December 8th Board of Director meetings, the Board of Directors provided staff with direction to modify the fire district policy and procedures for Board of Directors to add a legislative committee to the policies. The proposed legislative committee shall be tasked with reviewing proposed and enacted legislation of interest to the district, including attending meetings of legislative interest to the uh, fire district as individual representatives for the purpose of reporting back to the board on any matters of legislative concern or submitting recommendations to the board of directors. Additionally, section 1050 of the board policies has been amended to clarify that legislative committee meetings similar to similar to other meetings of ad hoc liaison and other meetings attended by the board in an official capacity remain compensable. 
An another uh, minor update suggested by legal counsel is related to recent changes to Health and Safety Code Section 13857, suggests a district should annually adopt via its written policies and uh, supports uh, by substantial evidence findings for why the um, for why more than four compensable meetings a month are necessary for the effective operation of the district. This state law change can be read as applying only to Brown Act meetings for which the district only has one regular meeting a month um, and requiring no further action. However, in the interest of being over inclusive and transparent, board policy section 1050 has been further amended to articulate why board member engagement via compensable meetings and other activities is necessary for operation of the district. So basically it's a cleanup item. As with previous board policy revisions, the proposed revised board policies has been reviewed by district legal counsel in order to ensure that all provisions of the policies are legally compliant. It is recommended that the board of directors review, adopt, approve and adopt a, a resolution 2022-01, rescinding resolution 2021-13 and adopting the policy and procedures for board of directors as presented with revisions to add a legislative committee and make clarifying changes regarding board compensation. Fantastic, thank you. Do we have any requests to speak at this time? No requests to speak. No? Okay, <laughs> seeing none and hearing none. Um, uh, if I could just kick this off, we talked about this last month that, uh, that I had a desire to establish a legislative committee. Um, I think that it would greatly benefit us to have better working relationships with our uh, elected officials, whether it be here locally or up in Sacramento and their staff members. Um, and my recommendation is we would have this just like our finance committee, it'd be a standing committee. Um, as Sandra said, it's part of board, it would become part of board policy. Um, and it would have two members on it. And my recommendation is that uh, Director DeMonico and myself be, uh, be on that committee. And with that, I'll take comments. Uh, Sarah? You knew because you saw me turn on my microphone. I saw you twitch. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is um, great. I think it's been needed to have a legislative committee um, for, for quite some time. Director DeMonico already works um, very hard with the CSTA legislative committee, and I feel that he is a vital member that should be a part of that. And I really do feel like the president should as well, um, because it's important for you to know there's a lot, a lot of legislation being passed under, you know, underneath our nose that I read um, daily and things that are, affect the district. So I agree with this one hundred percent. And after all, the board members speak. Um, yeah, I want to. Cool. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mr. Williams, any comments on this? Uh, no, we talked about this the last time, and. Uh, I do believe that it's to our benefit to have a legislative committee. So that's Thank all you. I'd like to say. Director Luth. I'll ditto Director Williams' comments. Yes, we talked about it. I was in support of it then. So, yes. And Director DeMonica. Oh, I, I agree. And it goes further than just legislative, mm -hmm. but with our local legislators as well. It's uh, There are times where we need to, I'm just going to use the term, get political. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and and we have to. It's uh, It's the way the world is now, so I, I support this. Uh, but I want to go back to the uh, um, board policies, and I didn't hear real well, uh, Sandra, when you were explaining about the other addition of the board policies and the compensable meetings. Mm -hmm. You said something about Brown Act meetings, and I, oh. I didn't quite pick up on that, and I was looking at it here, and I didn't really see what you said. Right, so there's three proposed changes. There's three proposed changes. Um, the first change is to add the legislative committee. The yes. second one is to include in the board policies to make that committee uh, compensable. Mm -hmm. And the third one was a cleanup item where um, there was um, current um, law that was revised in 2019 um, to have the board um, justify um, having four meetings uh, per month. So it's not real clear if if it if it's just in the, I could let um, Jeff Wayne on here that it's a regular board meetings. We only have one right now, but for the sake of just being transparent and um, we're placing this on our board policies um, for approval. What I was trying that's to understand well. when you talked when it, when you said Brown Act meetings, that's what kind of threw me a little bit because 
Um, there are other meetings. Well, I attend one like Confire meetings or Brownack meetings, but that would not be included with this. That would be something separate because you're talking about four Brownack meetings of our board. Is that do I understand that correctly? That's the problem. The statute doesn't say <laughs> meetings of the board. It doesn't say subcommittee meetings, and it doesn't say meetings of outside agency. It just says meetings. So would that include special meetings and emergency meetings? And yep. Was this written by yes. a legislator? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. Who is probably a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh. Shots fired. So, so what we are doing is we're, we're, we're just being safe. We, we believe that there is sufficient justification for making the findings that are required by the statute. Okay. Uh, and so that's why we included it in the policy. We believe there's, there's reason for you to meet more than four times uh, a month. Okay. All right. And with that, you okay for that? Uh, yes. I just, I just wanted some clarification. No. Nope. I mean, I just, Good. I was reading it. And... Uh, with that, I would... Uh, uh, I will move item number 11 okay. and appoint myself in. Um, just clarification, item 11. Is, is, uh, where'd it go? Community liaison oh, no, standing. It's, it, it was in there. I thought there were two separate items. No, no she I put it all in. The appointment was a separate item. Yeah. It's all well, one item. We, it's we, there are two separate. Um, well, the first item yeah. is to approve. Well, the curtain item is to approve board policies. Okay. Yeah. So, right. Right. Yeah, 10. It's okay. to do board policy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So items. you're right. So uh, I move to approve item number 10. And I'll second that. John seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 So 5 0. Now we'll go to item number 11. And I uh, motion to approve item 11. President. Oh. You need a quick comfort break? Quick comfort. Okay. We're going to take a quick three minute break. Thank you. So we're going to reconvene item number 11 uh, community liaison standing committee member assignments as board president. Uh, I'm able to appoint people onto this, but I just wanted to yeah. let you know that uh, I'm appointing Director DeMonico and myself to the new Legislative Committee. No vote required on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number 12. <laughs> Item number 12, Vegetation Management Ordinance 2022-01. Purpose is for the Board Directors to review, introduce, and conduct a first reading by title only of a proposed ordinance for vegetation management, defensible space, and declaring certain vegetation and waste matter a public nuisance, as well as allowing for the removal thereof as authorized under Health and Safety Code Section 13861, 13861I, uh, 13870, 13879, 14875, and 14900.5, while also providing for public comment. And we have Fire Marshal Danielle Barnes on the line for this report. Good evening, President, Chair, and members of the board. In 1995, the fire district implemented a weed and hazard abatement program with the city of Seattle Home. The intent of the program was to monitor and abate weed and brush hazards that could cause a threat to the wildland and urban interface of the city. The following year, the district entered into a similar agreement with the city of Seattle. This provided for better continuity of service and fire safety related to vegetation management throughout the entire district. Currently, our program requires biannual inspections of approximately 52,716 parcels. Based on our governing authority within the Health and Safety Code, after our inspections have con concluded, we are required to bring forward a resolution for weed abatement in a list of non-compliant parcels. Once the resolution is approved, our office provides notice to the respective property owners regarding the hazard, reinfection date, and potential consequences for failing to comply. This current process requires two separate resolutions. Attached to this report is proposed ordinance 2022-01 for vegetation management. The proposed ordinance prohibits the accumulation of combustible vegetation <coughs> that is capable of being ignited and endangering life, property, and the environment. The intent of this ordinance is to protect lives and property from the threat of wildfire while increasing community safety and to clarify the process in which we can absorb. Ordinance 2022-01 outlines specific definitions related to what constitutes combustible vegetation and a fire hazard, sets forth minimum general requirements for compliance, including defensible space, and outlines the due process for actions by the district relating to abatement including for the right to appeal and for the collection of cost recovery. 
The new ordinance formally declares native vegetation within the district as a seasonal and reoccurring nuisance, allowing an annual resolution to be brought before the union. This will allow for greater efficiency in the noticing to respective property owners regarding noncompliance with the ordinance and will assist in mitigating the increased risk of fires as a result. The proposed ordinance requires a public hearing prior to its adoption. The district legal council has reviewed and approved the ordinance and it will be advertised as required by law. It is recommended that the board of directors review, introduce, and conduct a first reading of ordinance 2022-01, approve reading, the reading of the entire ordinance, and read the ordinance by title only, advise the public that a complete copy of the ordinance is available for public inspection at fire district headquarters, and set a public hearing for February 9, 2022, bearing a second reading of ordinance 2022-01, and direct staff to provide public notice as required by law. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right. With that, do we have any requests to speak at this time? We have one, Mr. Charlie Blank. You're going to have to come back up. <laughs> Getting your extra time tonight, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess this this is a question for Danielle. Do you have to make an appointment to come and look at the ordinance? Because I, you know, b besides being on the, the fire safe council, I'm the treasurer, so I'm one of the board members on the HOA, and I want to know how it impacts us. So I probably want to come down and read it before the first public meeting. Do I just show up and say I'd like to read it? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. They're always here to help you, Charlie. I know that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Charlie, if you, if you call in advance, I'll make you a personal cup of coffee. Just because I added that while I'm out waiting. <laughs> wow. There you go. <laughs> hey. Coffee with the chief. There you go. Uh, with that, uh, board member comment, does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Director Evinger. Is the draft also available on our website? Well, um, it'll be attached as well to our minutes. So is it well for that? Okay. Yes, correct. It's attached um, to the minutes, excuse me, to the agenda to packet the agenda. for yes. this evening. But we'll also put it on the website. Okay. So that'll if be available on the website. If a member of the community requested it electronically, if they put in a request, could they also receive it? Via? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. That's all. I, I had lots and lots of questions, but thankfully for everybody's benefit, I had my monthly meeting with the chief, brought up all my questions. He contacted Danielle, got a lot of, uh, a lot of information back to me on, on the specific questions I had. So. Uh, no, I, I have no specific questions. I do want to commend staff, Danielle and her staff, for the job they do. A lot of work. Uh, and also recognize that the goal is to get compliance. It's not to be uh, penalizing people. We need to get compliance for the safety of everyone. And I think we go above and beyond to try and get that compliance. So that would be my only comments. This just really helps us streamline uh, yes. things. So that's, uh, I'm all for that. Anybody else have any questions? With that, we need a motion. A motion to approve. Oh, oh. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So, Director Evanger moves to approve. Second. Director Luth, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, at this time, I'd like to read the ordinance um, by title and number only. I was just getting ahead of myself. Um, ordinance number 202201, an ordinance of the Chino Valley Independent Fire District for vegetation management, defensible space, and declaring certain vegetation and certain waste matter a public nuisance and providing for the removal thereof. Item number 13, previously imposed restrictions on Director Williams. Purpose is for the board directors to discuss previously imposed restrictions on Director Williams by board action and provide clarification on status. Um, President Krieger. Yeah, so I asked this to, uh, to be put onto the agenda so we could have uh, an, an open conversation on this. When I I, I I didn't put this on to get into an argument with you, it was just to simply clarify. I went back and I was concerned that uh, uh, that our last motion that when we dealt with removing the censures that we had on you, we removed the vast majority of them. 
the one that we did keep, well, there was kind of two that we kept in place. One was uh, the access to uh, headquarters here, the, the key fob access uh, or the fob or the key access. Uh, and we asked that you, uh, part of the censure was that we asked that you make an appointment with the chief and then he would have whatever staff available uh, uh, to you um, at that time. Um, it, it, and I just, I, I was worried that, that we didn't have that clear. Um, I went back and I watched the video again today and, and I felt it was very clear. The other one was, was uh, a series of, of like the meeting with the chief directly. Uh, we, we said that's up to the chief. So we removed mm -hmm. those sanctions um, or at least we left it up to the discretion of the chief to be able to uh, do that. And from my understanding, the chief has met with you several times now. Everything's been great. Um, you did come here to headquarters and uh, without an appointment one day. My understanding is, is there was no issue that, that staff was able to accommodate you and everything was taken care of and, and, and I'm really thankful for that uh, along the way. This, this, the one that's in place, I just wanna make a couple points here. Number one, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's this way with everybody and, and I'm sure they can affirm this and I think the chief can as well. We don't show up without an appointment, even though that we have the key fob access to come here. I do not show up here if I don't have a reason to be here ever. Um, and I don't believe anybody else does. And Chief, can you answer that real quick and see if people are just randomly showing up? I can. Since I've taken this position in August, there hasn't been one instance where a board member has shown up without my uh, knowledge prior. And we've dealt with whatever business we've had to deal with and they've uh, politely excused themselves to leave. Yeah, so it's, it, it, I guess it's just, it's a, it's a matter of courtesy that, 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 that we're asking you to do that and to continue to do that um, uh, without an issue. But uh, my understanding is everything else is going great. Uh, I'm more than happy to revisit this again in six months uh, if, if you would like at that point. But with that, I'll, I'll let you say what, whatever you'd like to say. Okay. Um, yeah, the chief sent me a letter in regards to this, I wasn't aware that it was still in place. And uh, I would like to comment that Carolyn, the young lady that does the front office, she's a very sweet young lady, and one of the nicest people I've ever encountered. She's a great person. And she says, I don't know how things are supposed to go. And I says, well, I don't know either, except for the fact that as far as I know, I'm supposed to be treated like a regular board member. And so she let me in and uh, I went back there and uh, as far as the appointment situation, um, I was requested to come here and sign the, uh, for the pay the for our, our board. Right, because I don't do it online. And uh, so I came here and I did it. Um, and it was no big deal. And uh, so where I'm having a problem is uh, I was informed that uh, Mr. Ballinger had sent a letter stating that sanctions could be imposed. And he was wrong, pure and simple. And the letter he sent said something about a case that went to the federal court and the judge denied it because it wasn't ripe. The board had not voted on that case. And in that case, the board had not voted against the person that was filing the lawsuit. Here, <clears throat> the four of you voted to do sanctions on me and you can't do it. If you're gonna follow the law, Take them away, treat me like every other board member. You can do your um, censure if you want to do that, but you can't keep me from doing my job. You can't keep me from talking to people. You can't keep me from coming here and uh, that type of thing. I will say this. I'm pretty upset about it. However, I will... Um, do it the same as you do, 
Whereas if I want to come here, I'll call the chief and let him know I'm coming. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want things to get out of hand. I don't even, I don't have any inkling of why you guys do this. What the chief told me is, I make some people feel uneasy. Come on, I've worked here 33 years. There were no incidents of me attacking anybody or threatening anybody or being ridiculously uh, overt. I don't understand where you guys are coming from other than you're just goddamn mean. That's all I can get out of it. Why would you do something like that to somebody? I've never done anything. I've never attacked anybody. I do get like this when people are being ridiculous. When they're screwing me over, I do get loud. But treat me like a decent human being if you want to say, hey, yeah, we're going to comply with the law that we all took an oath. Now, he tried to, he tried to give some bunk, meaning our lawyer, about a case and what the deal was is, just like I told you, it wasn't ripe. It was a case where they had not voted. You guys voted. You violated the law. Why don't you ask him? Make him tell you, oh, you didn't violate the law by, by doing sanctions on me. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. We need a new lawyer. They, they, you tried to do the same thing to me when I had told Sandra to make the two copies. DeMonico tried to come after me unilaterally. Can't be done. Follow the law. We got a $250,000 a year employee here, Sandra, who can't understand what her job is. Hey. President, President Krieger, he should not be addressing not staff. staff like that, I asked her to make a copy of something that you did a $35,000 investigation on me, okay. and it came back that it was the district-related business. She has never come to me and says, Wynn, I'm really sorry I caused this problem to you. Never. Okay, so... So, I can tell you what happened. Don't tell me I can't tell you what happened. That's exactly what happened. And you're saying, oh, well, I'm addressing it. I'm not addressing anything except the facts. I'm giving you the facts right now, and you guys refuse to accept it. I do not understand why I cannot have contact with staff as far as you're concerned. So can I, can I be blunt? Absolutely. Your behavior just now towards Sandra makes, makes it uncomfortable for, her, for somebody in her position or somebody around her to be around you. That's why this is in place. What we have to avoid, our responsibility harassment. is to avoid a, a harassment issue. If you make somebody uncomfortable by just calling out somebody similar to what you just did, that makes an employee uncomfortable. And as managers or quasi-managers or this manager, the, guy head, the head guy in charge here, it is his responsibility legally through human resources laws in the state of California to protect his employees from harassment. Your behavior just now is exactly why that sanction is still in place. And all I'm asking you to do and I applauded you, if you noticed, I applauded you for coming in and everything went great and everything was fine. But it was exactly what you just did is why the sanction has to remain in place. And you told me in, it's not a sanction. Censure. You want me to oh, it's a, right sanction. it's a sanction. The it's four a of you voted on it, and it is a sanction. I'm sorry, it is it's a sanction. Censure. It's a censure. Whatever, whatever. And, and it's, you... It's a censure. It's, you're and making and so 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 here's the thing 
I put this on the agenda because you came in and I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page and we're all clarifying because my understanding was you were upset about this. I wanted to make sure that we spoke about this properly so 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 we could air this out. Now, I'm letting you know we've already voted on it. The center's still in place. It's not going to change unless if somebody at this board wants to overturn that or wants to make a motion to remove that sanction. Great. Okay, so that's... You guys are just great. You don't care about the law, do you? You don't care about anything except what you want. I care about our employees and the human resources laws of the state of California that dictate that we have to protect our employees. That's what I care If that's about. the case, then if why didn't he show it to me? If that offends you, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not threatening anybody. All I'm saying is, is a person needs to know their job. They need to do their job. And if I say it like in a tall voice or if I say it in a regular voice, it's still the same. I didn't say I was going to attack anybody. I didn't say I was going to hurt anybody. When and if the, I get the upset. Days, the days of raising your voice in the office ended 10 years ago. You can't do it. You can't do it. I think. I you think, can't do it. It makes people uncomfortable and it can trigger a potential lawsuit. Our job is to what protect. What the hell do you? You told me you didn't know the law. The interest of that. I know enough human resources. There was a few, to few, that. A, a few months back. You said, "I don't know the law," and I said something uh, about something, and you said, "Well, it doesn't matter to me. I don't know the law." And now all of a sudden, you're you know it all. I'm not saying I know it all, but I know enough about that because I've gone through the California Special District Governance. Well, uh, you want to know how much I know about the law? There, there's a guy right, right there not, that we that we pay to know the law, and he's lying to me. I'm supposed to be his client as well as you're his client and everybody else. Listen, I didn't want to do this to argue with you about this, okay? I, I didn't. I wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page and we're all crystal Ooh. clear on this. You said that you would call the chief and schedule appointments with him. That's all we're asking you to do. We have put back in place everything else that you've asked us and, to do. And give me my code. Give me you. No, you guys all have a code. I want mine. Give me my code. Okay. Well, how do I answer this without just being blunt and saying no? Then you're not you're not treating me like the rest of the board. We are treating you with the with the with the censor that's in place. You have so issued I don't know sanctions. What else to say. I don't know what else to say here with this. Is this so, Groundhog Day the movie? It is Groundhog Day. Jeff, is there anything else that I need to clarify? Did is, is I don't think so, no. Okay. So. Why, did you, why did you send send a letter that had lies in it, Jeff? Yeah, so we're going to move You don't on. want to answer those questions, do you? Because, because you're as bad as the rest of them. You're working against me. I haven't done anything to anybody. So, Director Williams, we're, we're, we're going to move on, okay? All, all that we're asking is that you call the chief to schedule an appointment. We put in, we put back everything in place. Please don't make us regret that. I'm asking you, please don't. Okay? We appreciate your behavior up to this point tonight that, that, that you've demonstrated over the past several months. You've shown us that you can do this. Please try to move forward. We're asking simply to call the chief. I notify the chief anytime I'm coming here. I'm asking you to do the same. You want to be treated like a regular board member? That's what we all do. We call the chief. We notify him when we're going to be in this building. That's it. Hey. If you want me to start checking in when I at the front desk, I have no problem with that. So I'll start doing that myself. With that, we're going to move on. There's no vote needed on this. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. We're going to move on. Chief's comments. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Director Krieger. Uh, under personnel development activities, the district has been awarded $3.3 million from the COVID-19 Special District Relief Fund from the California Department of Finance. California Special Districts provide essential services to the local communities, mandated a large portion of the state's critical infrastructure, and employed thousands of frontline workers. But initially, we, we received none of the COVID relief funding <coughs> available to cities and counties. A special thank you to CSDA for their leadership in successfully advocating for fiscal relief for California special districts and also for providing support to staff during the application process. 
Next, the district has been awarded a Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Financers Office Association for the uh, fiscal year 22 original budget. This is the fifth consecutive year to the district that the district has received the GFOA budget award since our inaug inauguration submission for, um, for our fiscal year 18 budget. Uh, so for, with that, I'd like to say a special thank you to our finance department and, and their whole team for that and for all the support that the operations side provided in the way of intel. <clears throat> As you're aware, the Omnicon variant is impacting our society very hard and is impacting our personnel as well. We are currently in extreme workforce due to the number of employees that are being impacted by COVID. As a result, we have had to cancel all of our, all of our time off for suppression personnel and are having people forced hired, have forced hired them many days in a row. We remain committed to ensuring the health and welfare of our people and keeping all of our units in service to the best, best of our ability. <clears throat> During the month of December, our suppression personnel staff two ambulances 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our community members continue to benefit from their efforts and sacrifice as our, pri as our priorities to provide exceptional service and safeguard the community. <clears throat> Next, during the month of December, our ambulances responded to 829 incidents in the district and transported 322 patients to the hospital. And keep in mind that's on our Chino Valley Fire District ambulances. Uh, the average response time for ambulances during this time frame was 8 minutes and 29 seconds, well below the uh, expected criteria for the private ambulance company. Since July 3rd, our ambulances have responded to 4,413 incidents and transported 1,848 people to the hospital. Under organizational uh, items of interest, I'd like to um, hand it over to our HR consultant, Andrew Say, for a uh, recruitment update. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, President Krieger and members of the board. Uh, just a quick update on recruitment efforts. Um, for firefighters, paramedics, we currently have six candidates in background phase of the selection process. Our HR director and finance director positions, closing date this upcoming Saturday, the 15th. And as of today, for the finance director's position, we have received 43 applications. And for the human resources director, 60 applications. So I anticipate wow. this to be a very robust recruitment with highly qualified candidates. Thank you, Director Say. And as I have my one-on-one -on -one monthly uh, meetings, I'd be more than happy to go over uh, the rest of our scheduling platform uh, as these processes march out. We have a really good plan in place. Uh, under upcoming events, uh, on January 17th, administrative offices will be closed in observance of the Do Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. And a finance committee is scheduled for January, January 24, 2022 at 8 a.m. The ASBCSD meeting will take place on January 24, 2022 in Rancho Cucamonga at 6 p.m. Uh, the Chino Valley Mayor's Prayer uh, Breakfast will take place on February 8th at 7 a.m. at Los Serranos Country Club. And last but not least, in the 2022 Chino State of the City event will take place at the Plains of Fame Museum, February 22nd. And that concludes my re report. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Uh, board member comments. So let's start with uh, you, Director Evinger. Okay. Um, so I attended, I'm just going to go through all the events that I did, the Chino Youth Parade. It, it um, seems like crazy December was so busy and it just flew by with everything. Um, Max, um, I had a Chino meeting, um, and let me see here, a uh, Chino council meeting, fire safe council meeting, my first Chino Hills meeting last evening since my liaison um, got changed. And it was a long one. It was a long one. Uh -huh, lots of stuff um, discussed. The Caballeros Ranch was the huge hot topic of it, and then some complaints about the trash service. And um, I want to um, give a congratulations to Matthew um, Gibbon and welcome him to our um, district. So very excited. Um, he's going to see a lot of good things, and it's great to have a new personnel there. And of course, Chief Shackelford, um, our retired chief, and I'm sorry he wasn't able to attend, but thank you so much for making sure that we did at least recognize him and um, and you know, just give him, I saw some of his goodies that you guys carried out after, so I'm glad we'll be getting those to him. Um, I want to thank um, the foundation, our staff, 
for all the hard work um, and the community outreach that we had during our Christmas and that with the toys, with everything, our max, our senior delivery, helping other nonprofits distribute toys and such. We had, there was a lot going on and it's very busy time. And thank you very much for your continued support to our community because it means a lot to the people who are the underprivileged who we serve. And that's a nice, you know, that, that is the great thing that we can say is how we reach out to our community and how we serve others. That's very, very important as a district. Not just fire and service, you know, giving them, but also serving the people who, you know, who need it most. So Steve and staff, thank you again for your hard work. Um, we've just killed it year after year and we're doing wonderful with our um, financial award. And um, I wanna thank you again, everyone for my beautiful little gavel plaque and such, and thank you for your support. And um, boy, I don't know, let me see here. It's the end of the month. So I don't even know if we'll be seeing each other before Valentine's Day or not, but. We're red next we'll, month. We'll be on the ninth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're red next month. Okay. We're okay. red next month. Thank you. We're red next. We're <laughs> <laughs> Director Williams. <laughs> oh, I'm already on. Thank you. Should I raise my voice again, um, Chief? I'd like to tell you, thank you very much for everything you've done. You're so far, you've been a great chief. Both of you, actually. And uh, I'm hoping that we can get over this ridiculousness very soon. I do know that I do get a little bit upset when people start messing with me the way it's happened. I don't understand why our $250,000 a year clerk of the board can't Let's say she's sorry. Let's there was $35,000 spent on me. When, and when, it proved when. that she was wrong. When? Come on. Are you done? Thank I'm you. I'm not finished. Well. I got my three minutes. Then finish it up without talking about that. And I'd, I'd like to say, why did he try and, and say something about, about the uh, case when it didn't apply? You guys ask him. You guys are putting yourselves out there for a lawsuit. And you shouldn't do that. He shouldn't have you do that. Okay. And, and understand, I get upset. I have every right to be upset. I've been putting up with this for over three years. I thought I was going to be just like you guys. I thought I was going to deal with the chief. I thought I was going to have good relations, and you're not letting me do it. You refuse to accept it. Oh, well, you don't deserve to do that. You've, you, you, you raise your voice. Come on, who wouldn't? All I did was ask her to make two copies, and it proved by a $35,000 investigation that she should have made the copies. Okay. And she's caused me hell. This for three is, years. We're, we're going back. So yeah, we're going back. Is there anything else that you'd like and to the discuss? The only thing I'd like to do is don't make it six months. Make it next, next meeting. Okay. Just make me like everybody else so I can act like you guys and be like you guys. You can fill out a request to have that put on the agenda. I will. Okay. Thank you. And we'll see, we'll see how truly you guys want to have a nice board. I wanted to have a good board, be a board member like you guys, Man. and the whole bit. You and I wanted the same things, but you refused to, you refused to give it to me. When we put everything back in place except for that one thing, but we're not talking about that anymore, we can discuss that next month. We Tar will. Director Luth. Okay, I attended the Chino Youth Parade, a Chino Hills uh, meeting, and then Chino, with the switch over, just attended the uh, at the first day of our Chino meeting. I uh, also want to welcome Matthew Gibbon to the district. I've heard, uh, or we've heard good things from the chief already and on what he's doing, so look forward to his time with us. Uh, also, yeah, to the chief, Chief Shackelford, his retirement. Uh, sorry he wasn't here. I just I appreciate all he did for this district. 
and uh, and how he helped me as as a board member too. Um, the input, the insights, uh, his leadership. I just wish him all the best and appreciate all that he did for this district. Uh, Sarah, thank you for your year as president. You did a wonderful job. A tough year. It's, it's been and it's still continuing on through uh, President Krieger's year with the COVID makes things a little more difficult. Uh, but you handled it well. You did well. You led us well. And I appreciate all that you did. I appreciate, uh, uh, again, uh, like most everybody, I get good guidance. I get good input. I appreciate the banner. I appreciate uh, the ability we have to have uh, normally good, good, maybe not everybody agrees, but we have good discussions and we, I think, come to, to good decisions that Maybe not everybody agrees with, but, but we all support. So that was part of your legacy and your leadership. So thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the only thing I want to say on the comp level is I might change my mind next time around, but I agree. It's not, it was, it's not a significant amount of money. It certainly isn't. Um, but for, for various reasons, I just felt this year, leave it alone. But, but I, I, have, I think it's fine where we're going, not a problem. But uh, we'll see where I go next time around. So that might be the wild card on that one next time around. We'll see. Um, congratulations to Steve and his staff on the GFOA award for the budget. That, again, five, I think five years, five years in a row, just a wonderful job. Again, our staff just does a great job. It's knocking it out of the park. And sorry, you mentioned all the things that district and, and staff and the, uh, that they're doing to serve the community. I agree. They, December is an incredibly busy month for them with everything going on, still performing the job that they're having to perform and serve the community well. Just an awesome, awesome job. So, so proud of, of being a part of this district and seeing that going on. Um, I don't know if I want to go there. Um, I would just say, in spite of the rhetoric that you heard here tonight, the, the, some of the claims are absolutely not true. They've been pointed out over and over at nauseum. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into that again, um, but I think we saw a demonstration of exactly why we need to keep in place the, the one restriction we currently have, and that would be in my comments. Thank you. Vice President DeMonico. Hmm. I concur with Harvey's last statement. Uh, attended the Chino Youth Parade, and uh, that was a nice event. Also attended the uh, Make a Child Smile and it was so nice to have Make a Child Smile back in person again. What a great event that was. And I'm so happy for everybody that uh, was able to participate, especially the kids. And uh, let's see, welcome Matthew and Chief Shackelford. It's been quite a ride. You were the chief for a number of years, and, and uh, we go back a ways. But I want to thank you for your leadership, for everything <coughs> you did. I hope you're watching this. And for everything we did for this fire district and uh, in our friendship. And I wish you well in retirement. You learned it. Enjoy it. And uh, looking forward to the next time I see you, hopefully you'll be wearing boots and a cowboy hat. <laughs> uh, Sarah, thank you for your leadership this last year. It's been a tough year. It's uh, been a tough couple years. Harvey first, then you, going through COVID, through other things. And, uh, and you let us know you did a great job. Appreciate your leadership and I appreciate your friendship as well. And I want to uh, congratulate Steve and your staff again on the award. Uh, is, is it, if you're on there, Steve, is it five years or six years? Uh, five years. Five, five years. years. It is five. Okay. I know it's been quite a few, and uh, uh, hopefully we can keep that going. So uh, with that, I was going to talk about a couple other things, but I think I'm going to forego those tonight and maybe after the meeting, Jeff, if you got two minutes. Excellent. Uh, and for me, uh, I'm very pleased about the $3.3 million we got in the COVID relief funds. Um, that, that is fantastic. Uh, you know, as, as Dave pointed out earlier, we got $0 in assistance from the federal government and from the state uh, up to this point. So uh, with millions of dollars in expenditures. So very, very pleased uh, about that. Um, and we'll be discussing uh, what we're doing with that money, probably just simply to replace what we, what we spent. Happy to see that we're uh, moving forward with district maps. I attended all the community events that everybody else did as well. Um, and Charlie, most of the time when you see us at community events, we are not paid for those things. That's, right. that's, that's true. So most of those community events that we're with you at, 
Those are not compensated uh, per board policy. Those are just us being there because we love the community and we love hanging out with you. <laughs> I also want to uh, to welcome Matthew to the to the family of the fire district. Sarah, you did a fantastic job. It's always a pleasure working closer with you uh, on on a daily basis. Sometimes it seems like uh, Tim, uh, uh, we wish you the absolute best. I look forward to uh, uh, joining you for some good barbecue soon. So. Uh, I just might show up in my trailer at your uh, new place. Uh, Steve, uh, the GFOA, fantastic, well, job, well done for, uh, for you and your staff. I, I really do appreciate it, and I know the effort that you guys put in to make that happen. Uh, and I really want to uh, continue to thank our, our personnel. Um, and really, I want to talk about you know, the chief officers all the way down. You know, we've had, uh, with this Omicron, an unprecedented amount of personnel out and even our deputy chiefs and battalion chiefs stepped up to go work, um, to work down, uh, is, as we call it, to, to go out and fill those shifts. So I really appreciate uh, the, the effort that you all have put in uh, to keep the place running and to keep the community safe along the way. Uh, lastly, just very pleased that, uh, that my daughter's here tonight, Samantha. So glad glad you were here. She's a college graduate. Woohoo! Yeah. So glad that she's is she your oldest. She is. So with that, um, uh, we would like I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Let me turn to the correct page here. Uh, the meeting will be adjourned to a regular meeting of the fire board of directors of the Chino Valley Independent Fire District to be held on Wednesday, February 9th at six o'clock p.m. at the district headquarters office at 14011 City Center Drive, Chino Hills, 91709. With that, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you.